This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. Lara Yaretsian is with us to give us a expert perspective from a criminal defense standpoint. In the case against Brian Koberger, their uh, scuttlebutt, if you will, of the last week or so has been Bethany Funk, the one of the surviving roommates that did not want to testify, had a subpoena issued, and uh, they were able to come to an agreement that she will now uh, have an interview with the defense in Nevada, where she resides. Uh, Laura, what's your take on this? This went from subpoena, and then now it's all the way down to just an interview back in Nevada. If she has some sort of exculpatory evidence, wouldn't they be pushing much harder for her to actually be testifying in Idaho? Uh, in, first and foremost, I'm not really understanding what, why this witness is fighting it. Mm-hmm. Listen, I don't care who the defendant is. They have a right to uh, you know, a fair preliminary hearing, a fair trial. And I mean, she's a witness. She was there when this happened. Why is she fighting it tooth and nail? Mm-hmm. At some point at the trial, she's going to have to testify. Uh, she's a precipient witness to some certain things. She heard things. She saw things. So her testimony is critical, critical. So, and it, I don't think it's smart because think about it on appeal, even though we're at the prelim stage. I mean, the court, the court's going to try and find out, find uh, uh, decide if there's probable cause, right, mm-hmm. for the arrest and for, for the charges uh, and whether this case should go to trial. And, you know, if there's exonerating evidence, if the defense is saying we believe she's got exonerating evidence, they should be able to put her on the witness stand. Uh, and even if she doesn't do it now, it's at some point, sooner or later, she's got to get on the witness stand. And testify. I mean, every defendant has the right to to exonerating evidence. We don't even have to request it. Supreme Court case law says the prosecution has to turn it over even if we don't request it. And Mm -hmm. if they don't turn it over, the case can be dismissed. Why take chances? I don't I don't understand it. Wouldn't that exonerating evidence be in the notes of the interviews that were done with police that both the defense and the prosecution would have in their possession right now through discovery? Well, what, well, what, what ex- exactly? Oh, if they're in the notes, then wouldn't the process, wouldn't the defense want to present that at the prelim? Well, See exactly. What? Yeah. I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. Is it needed uh, to, to bring her in to testify if, if that information is already available? If there is something there that shows. I see. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I, if, Listen, in a case like this, if you're going to do a preliminary hear, per, preliminary hearing, um, it's not you're not going to just base your prelim on um, hearsay evidence. Mm-hmm. You're going to want her to come in and testify. Mm-hmm. Why rely on reports? Uh, the proper way to do it is to bring in witnesses, and that's why you have you have a uh, preliminary hearing, which is a proceeding where you're. Uh, the the court is making a determination uh, of whether there's probable cause for this arrest and whether there's probable cause that a crime was committed. I mean, obviously that's clear, but Mm -hmm. is it enough in this case? And this is the place. Of course, you're going to want to bring up exonerating evidence and you're going to bring it up through a witness, not through hearsay, not through a report. That stuff doesn't come in. In California, we do have exceptions. We have Prop 115. We have preliminary hearings where... uh, the prosecution can bring in hearsay evidence through a detective, but even there, there's limitations. And generally, in in cases like this, they don't do Prop 115 preliminary hearings. They do live Mm -hmm. (laughs) witness hearings. And I would expect that in this case. And that's the best way to preserve any um, appellate issues. For example, if she doesn't testify and only the hearsay comes in, um, and for some reason, this witness is not available later for the prosecution. That's a problem for the prosecution. Mm-hmm. So it, it just, to me, it makes more sense for the witness to testify. And again, I don't understand why she's fighting it. Maybe she doesn't want to be the one who gives exonerating evidence, but the, the truth is the truth. And you testify it. That may not be enough to save him, whatever, whatever this exonerating evidence is. Uh, and and if there is exonerating evidence or what they're interpreting as exonerating evidence, 
I, I think it's going to be very interesting to find out. The fact that it's going to be an interview, not a deposition in Nevada when they sit down with her, it, it, does that play a factor in the in, in impactfulness that this will have on the the hearing? Well, I'm assuming they're doing an interview because that's part of the discovery process. Mm -hmm. Maybe the defense doesn't have enough information as far as what the exonerating evidence is. And hence the court or uh, has ordered the interview or the parties have agreed amongst themselves to have an, an interview of the witness to get more information. Um, and, and that's the way I see it, unless there's something more and I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's going to be very interesting to watch and, and see exactly what they have. Uh, would there be uh, something that, that she could say? or Are they speculating? Is there a rumor, I'm wondering, of that she has information that was not given to the police earlier? Or is this solely based on, on what is there and those reports that the defense uh, and the prosecution both have? Uh, it's hard to tell, uh, Tony. I mean, the bottom line is they've got some kind of information. Mm -hmm. and maybe their information by itself is not enough to force this witness to come in and testify. And that's why I'm saying it makes sense that they're interviewing her first mm -hmm. to see if they if she does have that exonerating evidence and what sure. is the magnitude uh, of uh, and the importance of this exonerating evidence. Exonerating evidence is important no matter what mm -hmm. uh, in any case, right? So maybe that's what they're trying to figure out so that they can make a decision as far as whether she should come in and testify, whether this uh, subpoena can be quashed or not, basically, in other words. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what that's the way I see it. It's just one of the steps, procedures that they're going through before a decision is made. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. Lara Uretzian, top criminal defense attorney. Thank you so much for your insight. Always a pleasure having you on the show. If you want to weigh in on anything that we talk about here, you can do so. We have a phone number for that. It's 888-5-KILLER. 888-554-5537 to weigh in on anything that we got on the air. Love to hear from you. I'm Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.